Nick here, Brave Access Customs. Today we're having a look at a new hot end for Ender 3, CR10, Tivo Tornado, anything that runs these types of hot ends, which are quite common on amongst quite a few different brands now. So this is the Fetus Dragonfly, which is a direct replacement for your stock unit. Now these are a full metal hot end, so let's get into it and have a bit of a look. As you can see, it's got a nice blue heat sink with a silicon sock, which is nice to see. A lot of companies now don't actually include silicon socks and they expect you to just to run them with nothing. I like to use a sock, not only for better thermal properties, but it also, if you get any plastic curls up, you know, it's less likely to get all of your nozzle if you have a bit of an accident. So, very solid piece of unit. Um, once again, a full metal hot end. A look at the nozzle. As you can see, the nozzle, I believe it's plated brass. I could be wrong. Um, we'll double check on that and have a quick look in the manual. Um, screw that in so we don't lose it. So if we open up this box further, let's see what else we get. So we get some included tools, which is nice to see. Um, try not to lose any of this. Um, thermal grease, which will be obviously once you remove, if you remove any of the parts on this, you normally grease it back up to get better thermal um, con connectivity between your heatsink and your uh, throat. So these are going to be nozzle. And I believe that will be just for holding the heat block in place, I believe. Let's off have a quick look. Uh, yes it is, for holding that in place. It's a little bit annoying because you're normally going to install it probably that way on your heater, on your printer, so it's, being at the back is probably a little bit annoying because then you sort of got to try to get it in from the back rather than the front, but I mean that's probably not the biggest issue to worry about. Now, now but this is a little bit different, so normally you got your the mister, it normally just goes on the side and it bolts onto the side as it does on most and this one actually runs a little sleeve and the sleeve's actually designed to go in that hole there and it clamps down. So you're, you're reducing the risk of snapping the wire because I've had a few of those little wires snapping on the thermistor. I'm sure many of you have as well, which is very annoying. Um, so that's nice to see that they sort of implemented this, but obviously your wire is then going to be free, sort of floating on its own. But if it's kept, kept um, sort of cable tied up, it shouldn't really move too much anyway. So you shouldn't have too many issues. So let's get this stock unit off and we'll get the new one installed. It's not going to be a full you know, install video, most guys should know how these come off. I'm sure if you had your printer long enough you've removed your screws before. You've got your two that hold your main fan casing on. Just be careful when you remove this not to a thing. And as you can see this is quite, it's got a little bit of fan on I like to sort of just try to hook it up there. Um, as you can tell this is still a purely stock unit. I've had a couple of little issues where I've had to cut and trim the tubing, but nothing major. It's been quite reliable. It's just been interesting just to run a stock unit for the last, I've probably had it probably three months. Actually might take it off from this end. We might actually change the whole tubing out as well while we're at it, since I've got some new stuff sitting here. Oh, for some reason it's quite a little bit tight, this one. Oh, there we go, got it out. So we'll just remove this from here. And you just got your two that hold your whole unit on. Unscrew them. So we're going to install it with the stock unit, uh, the included screws. Don't try to fit the stock ones like I just did, because they're too long. Just sort of finger tighten them up for now. Now what I like to do with these, I like to make sure I push down evenly square. Sometimes some of these units actually, not so much the hot end, it's normally the carriage. Sometimes you can have a little bit of play in them. Um, so I like to press down so I sort of know it's pushed down somewhat square. So we might actually just give that, f pull some of this crap out of this fan. Not too bad. Uh, obviously, one day I'm going to actually change the part cooling fan. I'm still running a stock fan on it. I haven't really been too concerned yet. Sort of have had a few little issues with it, but mainly only been printing PLA. 
Okay, so once it's actually probably in there, you're probably not going to have too many issues. Um, so we might actually just bolt the fan up and just leave that in there loose and then tighten down that grub screw. Now some people recommend this, some don't, but I like to use, I've got a body remover from the RC cars, I just like to ensure that the ends, as you can see here, you get a little bit of a build up on the inside, so I just like to take the body remover, just a couple of turns, you see it's removed all that crap out of the centre of it to ensure that it's going to be a nice smooth flowing part. So now what they recommend to do is to heat it while it's warm and the recommended temperature is I believe it was two, yeah, 285 and obviously allow it to wait to stabilise as well so prayer. Obviously, yeah, end of three, stock end of three is only going to 260. I forgot to mention that. This is, like I said, stock end of three. So, 260 is going to have to do. Ultimately, this hot end is rated for 500 degrees. So, we just wanted to show what it can do on a stock machine without getting too carried away. So, we'll let that heat up. Okay, so. So, we've got our first part printed up. Well, this is how it came up. This is just our base PLA setting that we've been using on the machine. You can see a couple of little issues just sort of along that bottom edge, but nothing major. A little bit of stringing in the handle, but overall it's pretty good. Underneath, you can see where it would have bridged the gap. It's come out fine. Uh, so it's sort of just a little bit more fine tuning probably on the retraction, maybe on the flow a little bit too. But overall, pretty happy with that. So next up, we're going to get some carbon on, some carbon PLA, and then we'll probably follow it up with some PETG, maybe some ABS and... We've got some nylon here, which we may have to chuck in the oven to dry it out, but we'll give it a couple more tests and yeah, we'll go from there. All right, so we move on to the carbon PLA that we've printed up. You see, we've just kept the settings the same as we did with the last one. We won't get too carried away yet in styling the settings up. You get a little bit of stringing around there. Uh, it's just sort of part of the parcel with some of the uh, carbon stuff. It can be quite stringy. But as you can see inside, it's bridged the gap quite nicely. And it's still got the stringing between the handle here, but it's nothing too major. Once again, this is printed fabulously. Once again, straight out of the box pretty much. You know, I've just changed my setting just to retraction, and that's all I've done so far. Obviously, you dial, it takes a little bit more dialing in with the full metal to get it perfect, especially with the stringing, because obviously you can't retract as much as what you normally would. So. Let's get some ABS on. We're going to also just do it in exactly the same profile. Um, we're just going to change the temperature and turn the fan off ABS and see how it comes out. So we've done ABS print here. Same settings as we run the PLA, just with the temp up, cooling fan turned off. Turned out pretty good. Obviously a little bit of um, sagging through there, which you'd expect that sort of size with ABS. And then we decided we'll move across and we'll have a go at TPU. Once again, same settings. Um, this stuff's sit, been sitting out for about, uh, I'd say, three months. So I think it's got a little bit of water in it. But it's, it's printed out pretty nicely considering. And it's still, you know, a stock extruder setup on this as well. Just the hot end changed. A uh, little bit of stringing between the handle, once again, on this bell. Like most parts have with the cooling fan. It was pretty much turned down to nothing on this. I think we had it about 10%. And then we moved across to something that we always have been having issues with, and this is a silk PLA. Um, I don't know if many of you guys have printed with this, but I've always noticed that any time I print with this, when it retracts, it sort of expands the filament. It's quite weird. Um, it's printed out pretty good. The only issue we started having was further up. You sort of see around the handle that it started to sort of extrude not quite as nicely. I don't know if that's because there's so many retractions in a small area. But I mean, overall, it's still come out great. This has had minimum setup. Basically, we've just run out of the fault profile on this, which is nothing fancy, and it's come out great. Uh, so if you guys want to pick these up, we'll put the link in the description for these, and we'll also put the link for the tubing in the description as well. Uh, it's got a lot tighter tolerances than your stock shooting, which is normally quite big. Help with your likes of your TPU as well, uh, which obviously you've got to print it quite slow, but. It shows you can still print on this style setup without having to go straight to a direct drive. But this setup being a stock uh, hot ends as well will work with your original 
direct drive for the guys that have just taken the stock extruder and just flipped it up there on the plate that they've brought off the market. So it's in a good addition for that as well if you're looking at printing some hotter materials. Uh, obviously we didn't get around to printing some nylons. The stuff we had has just got too much moisture in it. Um, we haven't dried it out. We're waiting on a new box that we've cut coming that we backed on Kickstarter, which we're looking forward to get and see what it goes like. Hopefully it should help keep our nylon in a lot better humidity because it just in the shed it just seems to soak up even in a bright box. So till the next video, have a good one.